Hello everybody and welcome back to In Review. Today of course we're taking a look at Black Ops 3. Um, I'm recording this right on the conclusion of the Xbox One and PC beta. Um, so to give you a little bit of background on me, I've been playing Call of Duty since COD 4. I've had a heck load of experience in this game. I've prestiged in everyone. I've had countless, countless days playing time. And um, I played the uh, beta on the PS4 for starters, uh, where I reached the level cap. And I've also played it uh, on the PC for the last few days too. So, let's talk about Black Ops 3, and I'd like to sort of break this down into a few different sections. But to start with, the gameplay you're looking at, um, you're seeing three different clips, one of which is just ending, moving into the second two, um, and then I've got some full gameplay for you. Now these first few clips show off some things that I'm talking about in this video, so I'd like you to pay close attention to things like movement um, and specialist abilities in particular. So, for starters, let's talk about connection in Black Ops 3. Now, this is purely based off my experience and the experience of my friends and those around me, but my general impression was that three quarters of the time, the connection was brilliant, and so too was the hit detection. I really, really liked the hit detection and the connection in this game. However, about one quarter of the time, we were sort of plagued with um, what I think was probably server issues, and it led to some really bad lag, but it was lag for everybody, so it made me feel as though it probably wasn't an issue on my end. Um, hopefully, when the full game is released, we can get that um, connection that I was receiving three quarters of the time, where the connection was fluid and smooth, and everything ran really quite brilliantly, if I don't say so. Um, the second big thing, for Black Ops 3 I think was the movement. So in Advanced Warfare we had the the crazy addition of boost jumps and 3D movement um, unlike anything we'd seen in Call of Duty prior and Black Ops 3 has basically toned it down from the Advanced Warfare standard. I think it would be fair to say um, we don't jump as high we can't do boost dodges to the left or to the right, but we can do a controlled thrust jump, to quote Treyarch, um, and, and sort of balance that out with small jumps or large jumps. You really have more control, as well as the boost slide. So, I think, from my perspective, that at first it was a little bit strange not being able to boost left and right, the dodges. And I do still miss the dodges. But... As the beta moved on and progressed, I actually quickly forgot about them and started to realise that they weren't at all necessary. I think that the boost jump in this game is perfect. I would guess that probably 90% of my engagements, if not 95, were actually on the ground. Gun versus gun, on the ground combat. And that's what I missed from Advanced Warfare. The, the flying around in the sky and trying to hit each other was fun, but... It had its limits and it was a little bit tedious and I think that Treyarch have really mastered the movement. My only complaint is that, um, and it's something that I'm sort of used to now, but the boost slide, I feel as though you slide a little bit too far and I think that's an issue um, if you're trying to sort of go through a doorway or something and I think the way to fix it would be just to tone it back a little bit, make it that you slide about 80% of the distance that um, it slides during the beta. or have it so that you can actually sort of steer your character a little bit as they're on their knees. Not too much, because I know that it's quite unrealistic, but if we could just steer a little bit while we were sliding, it would be really nice. But overall, I think the movement's brilliant. Next up, we're looking at the maps. So we had uh, four maps to play during the beta. I thought that the colour scheme was really good. It was nice and bright, not too challenging. I will admit, though, at the start of the beta, I did struggle to um, identify people who were laying on the ground. I felt like they didn't pop enough, but by the time I'd completed the PS4 beta, moving into the PC especially, it wasn't that challenging. I think the maps are, are colourful. I think that they're very traditional in the sense that they've got that three-lane style where there's three main ways to run through the map and then they intersect in the middle. Um, and I really love that traditional flair, too. The size of the maps I thought was quite good too. This uh, map here that you're seeing at the moment, Combine, was the smallest um, of the maps. I believe, just from feel, it felt like it was the smallest. But I'm not 100% certain on that, to be honest. Um, 
I would like to see in the full release maybe a couple of larger maps. Uh, Stronghold, the snowy map, was quite a nice sort of quote-unquote larger size by modern standards. Um, but I would like to see some large ones. Not Ghosts crazy or Modern Warfare 2 Derail crazy, but so some larger ones. Um, we move on to balance. Uh, how was the game balanced? I think that in terms of weapons, for me at least, Black Ops 2 was the staple for weapon balance. I think you would struggle to find a gun in that game that you couldn't do well with or do poorly with. Uh, certainly by the end of the game. I mean, yeah, we had the PDW and the MSMC, but all things considered, all of the guns were viable, I think. Uh, just my opinion. Again, feel free to contest it below. But I think that here in Black Ops 3, it was mostly similar. The Razorback and the M8A1 were the standout OP weapons, I think, <laughs> for most people. Um, however, Treyarch have shown us that they're, they're willing to combat that because they actually released a patch just recently to sort of try and fix that. And I think by the time the game fully releases, the weapon balance will be absolutely perfect. But at the moment, I'd give it about an 8 out of 10. Um, I did find snipers a little bit weird. The aim down sight sensitivity was all wrong, though, I think. Um, equipment, reasonably well balanced. Um, C4's back, kind of annoying if I'm honest. But grenades are finally useful again. I feel like in Advanced Warfare they just weren't useful at all because people could just fly out of the way. Um, but finally, we have useful equipment again. It's actually worth a point. And I really like that. Um, score streaks, are they balanced? I think yes. I think they're certainly strong enough. Um, unlike the sort of weak, Pathetic, to be honest, score streaks in Advanced Warfare. I thought they were really strong. Um, they could use some minor adjustment. For me, the main point was actually the the mothership, the strongest score streak in the game. I, I called one in, but I would often feel as though the pilot was actually worse off than the assistant gunner. And, and if you've used a mothership, you'll know what I'm talking about there. Finally, specialists. Hmm. They were really brave putting specialists in, and I think for the most part they're really balanced. The one that I don't like is Rejack, the one that brings you back to life after you die. The, the cloud of smoke that comes out from the Rejack man is too much. It's just too much, and I can't stand it, so I hope that they fix that. The specialist weapons are okay due to their short lifespan, I think. Um, overall, I was really pleased with the beta, and I can't wait for the full game. Um, they also added water to the game, which was kind of exciting, I guess. Um, but other than that, we've basically covered all the real changes. Um, so overall, I'm really happy with Black Ops 3, and I hope that you are too. Please leave your feedback below. I'd love to discuss it further. Thanks so much for watching.